another office established much earlier, the one that served and as, in, as an inspiration to Reika was mentioned several times by all speakers. The Franco-German Youth Office and Organization is established in 1963 after the Franco-German Friendship Treaty. It has been working since this, um, it has been working relentlessly since to strengthen the ties between young people in Germany and France, and most importantly, deepen their understanding of each other. We're happy to have with us one of the two Secretary Generals, Mr. Thomas uh, Butcher, uh, Tobias Butcher, and I give them the floor. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. Minister Hassani, Excellencies, dear colleagues. Denise Bardet was a primary school teacher in the French municipality of oradour sur glane She enjoyed reading Goethe, Schiller, and Heinrich Mann. She shared her passion for German literature with her pupils, a girls' class, even in times of war, of World War II. On June 10, 1944, a few days after the Allied landings in Normandy, Denise turned 24 years old. In the afternoon hours of her birthday, Oradour sur Glan became the scene of one of the cruelest crimes committed by the German occupiers in Western Europe. The village and almost all its inhabitants had been massacred. Denise and the seven to eight year old girls of her school have been burnt in the village church. The order to kill was given by a 29 year old German born in Magdeburg today's East Germany, in my hometown. The last survivor of Oradour sur Glan, Robert Ebra, died a few months ago in the year of the 60th anniversary of the Elysee Treaty. French President Charles de Gaulle ordered that the village ruins should not be rebuilt as a sign of remembrance. It was not even 20 years later in 1963, that the very same French President Charles de Gaulle, together with the German Chancellor Konrad Adenauer, established on the ruins of a century-long hatred and enemy constructions, the Franco-German Youth Office. Having celebrated 60 years of the Elysee Treaty this year, with young people from France, from Germany, but also in trilateral and multilateral formats from Southeastern Europe, from Ukraine, from the Maghreb, our international organization for young people brings together per year up to 200,000 young people in cooperation with up to 8,000 partners, including national youth councils, youth federations, sport associations, universities, vocational schools, or second, uh, secondary schools. Throughout 60 years, this network of trust, reliability, and yes, friendship has enfolded and shaped generations in France and Germany. Young people have experienced and promoted intercultural dialogue and understanding, learned the other's language, fostered peace by being open-minded, and contributed to de-radicalization. Le couple franco-allemand, as we say in French, the German-French engine, as we say in German, the French-German rapprochement has, has been a pivotal driver of European integration and until today both a government-driven day-to-day cooperation and a grassroots movement of civil society and youth. Which inspirations might the United Nations take from here? Arc enemies can become best friends. History is not destiny and courage leads the way to sustainable peace. It has been claimed that youth plays a significant role in wars, both as victims and perpetrators. The UN Council Resolutions 2250, 2419, and 2535 on youth, peace, and security rightly highlight that youth is an indispensable agent of change, of peace building, and conflict resolution. About 10 million soldiers died in World War I in Europe. Together with our network of partners, the Franco-German Youth Office has brought together about 10 million young people from France, Germany, and beyond. 
in complex and dangerous times like ours, historical and unbreakable achievements offer promising points of orientation for the future. Today, in between France and Germany, there are more than 2,200 twin towns and more than 3,000 university corporations. 75% of participants in cross-border internship programs describe this as a life-changing experience. Or, as a Turkish-Armenian-German-French group said to me this week in Berlin, youth exchange fosters compassion. It represents the most effective prevention against nationalism, racism, or anti-Semitism. Cross-border youth exchange should become an additional pillar of UN's agenda on youth peace and security. It allows for youth participation. It fosters self-esteem and trust, conflict prevention, and conflict resolution. Youth exchange as peace work has been realized successfully by numerous organizations worldwide in bilateral, regional, or multilateral formats. The Office Franco-Québécois pour la Jeunesse, the German-Polish Youth Office, the German-Greek Youth Office, and the one and only Regional Youth and Cooperation Office for the Western Balkans, or the European Youth Foundation at the Council of Europe with its 46 member states. Youth exchange fosters transgener transgenerational networks of trust as the drivers of peace. Let us not forget, the resolutions on youth, peace, and security are not only addressing today's youth, but tomorrow's teachers, tomorrow's mayors, artists, company owners, agents of change, and tomorrow's decision makers. Many of those who commit themselves to youth and peace work are volunteers. During the COVID crisis, the youth sector and young people worldwide suffered tremendously. And as it just has been highlighted by the Assistant Secretary General and also last year by the Secretary General of the United Nations in his 2022 report, ensuring adequate financing is a central concern for the youth peace and security agenda since its inception. This holds true for youth exchange as well. Every investment into youth participation by governments, every investment into youth exchange is invaluable. Young people across the globe articulate the view that peace and security are more than just the absence of violence and of universal concern. The biggest threat for young people in Germany and France today is no longer in a neighboring country. For 66% of young people in Germany and 62% in France, the biggest challenge of our time is climate change, a threat multiplier. Cross-border youth participation and youth exchange also allows to address together shared risks and opportunities and makes it possible to transform feelings of fear and powerlessness into commitment and engagement. In times of interconnected multiple crises, we need to re-establish the trust of young people into their own future. RICO has the fantastic slogan, a better region starts with youth. So let us say a better world starts with youth Youth is, we are convinced, the best ally for sustainable peace governments should wish for. Let me conclude with the, world, with the words of a teacher, Denise Bardet. Everything could be so easy, so good, so pleasant. Will people never build their paradise on this earth? How beautiful and livable the world would be if everyone could only let their good inclinations blossom. May her memory be a blessing. Thank you very much for this honor and invitation to speak to you today, especially to the permanent mission of Albania and also to France and to Germany. Thank you very much, Tobias, for your inspirational remarks, uh, but also for supporting uh, RICO so that the life-changing achievements in your part of Europe become a normality in our part of Europe as well.